Okay, boys and girls, sports fans, it's Dan here, still in the Mandalay Bay. They will not let me out of this building. <laughs> and to my right, probably your left as you're looking at this, but my right, we have two ladies from Manhattan Associates. Those of you who don't know this company, very long established supply chain uh, software company, uh, using a PSA solution now from Financial Force, correct? Yes. Tell us a story, ladies. Who would like to go first? I'll start. Okay, go. All right. So we uh, implemented Financial Force PSA mm -hmm. last year, mm -hmm. kind of piloted for a few months, mm -hmm. kind of a slow rollout. Uh, we've been fully live um, globally since January, okay. and uh, it's, been, it's definitely been a journey. <laughs> but we're, we're really enjoying the system and, and starting to see um, a lot of adoption um, around the globe. Um, and and a lot, we're starting to see the benefit, actually. Okay. Enjoying a PSA solution. Please tell me how that works. Well, <laughs> if you knew what system we were on before and how painful it was. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're talking about a couple of thousand people, yeah? Yes, 2, 000, about 2,000 people. And how many countries are we looking at? Let's see, we're in about, we're all over uh, EMEA, Europe, and Asia Pacific, and then we have a very large office in Bangalore, India as well. Okay. So with the old system, what sort of things were you trying to do that you couldn't do? Let's, let's talk about that then. So in, in our old system, some of the challenges that we had, mm -hmm. uh, we, we did not have um, uh, any integration to Salesforce, our Salesforce platform, where we house our sales opportunities mm -hmm. and our um, CRM, our cases for our software issues. Mm -hmm. um, we also did not have integration with our financial system. Mm -hmm. And within the PSA, the old PSA tool itself, we did not have integration between resource management and project management. So there wasn't any integration anyway, really? No, it was very, lots of disparate systems. So it made it very difficult to get a full picture of what was going on with our customers. Okay. You also have different models as well for running the business, don't you? Would you like to just talk about that a little bit, Amy? The sure, different model? absolutely. So because of our different um, geos, those, uh, those offices operated very differently in mm. a lot of um, instances. So, for example, APAC typically works with partners, and we don't have as much of that relationship in the um, Americas. So um, aligning those business processes was really kind of, um, we saw this as an opportunity to really work with those geos, talk about what their challenges were with the system that we had, and how can we build a system that can accommodate all of the needs, but yet streamline the processes. So it was a big effort globally okay. to accomplish that. So what you were basically saying to me, if I've read this right, is lots of disparate systems with all the pain that goes with that. Let's take advantage of an opportunity to streamline what's going across globally and um, use a single system of record for, to, to achieve that. Yeah, is that yes. right? Okay. And one more challenge <coughs> that we had with our old system was um, sometimes it was hard to gain access um, for our consultants that traveled. So pretty much our teams, our services teams, are on the road four days a week at least, and they had trouble logging into the old system. So being on the cloud and having access anywhere was really important to us. Okay. If you're making that level of change, there's a lot of challenges involved, right? Absolutely. How are you managing that? I think that one of the best things that we did in the beginning, uh, when we first started designing what solution, uh, the solution for Manhattan, is we brought in uh, super users or champions from each different um, country or office. Mm -hmm. um, and we actually invested in bringing them to the United States for several weeks <coughs> so that right. we could actually have the face to face conversations and kind of, you know, for lack of a better term, hash out the differences and, and, co and come, to, come together. Um, to find the best solution for the whole company, as opposed to, well, the you know the U.S. does it this way, so therefore we all have to do it this way, mm -hmm. you know. So so having them in the same room with us, we were really able to, um, you know, talk through what made the most sense, and also not go not design exactly what we already had because we were used to it. We really challenged all of the super users to kind of think outside the box and think about if they were starting from scratch, how would they want the system to work with if, if they had no limitations. So really you were trying to put put them into the shoes of being customers in a sense, yeah? Yes. Okay. And at the same time, what you it sounds like you were prepared to do 
was to negotiate almost a settlement of what the process would look like. Exactly. So you might give something up, but you would gain something. You might give something, yes. and I would, and so that's a good way of doing it. And the, at the end, everybody walked away feeling like they had a part in right. the design, right. and so everybody was bought in. Right. So they all went back to their, co their country saying, <coughs> we have a good solution mm -hmm. for everybody. That's interesting. How far down the track have you got so far? So in terms of implementation? Yeah. So we're live. Okay. We've been live since January. Um, I, I would say we, we do weekly trainings mm -hmm. um, to continue to re-educate people on the tips and tricks. Because I think, you know, for our project team, we were so ingrained in the product. We knew it really well, but when we rolled it out, I think it's one thing to take the initial several hours of training, but then you start using it and it, everybody learns a lot mm. from the just daily yep. usage. Yep. So it's now we're circling back and re-educating people for all the lessons that we've learned and all the new ideas that we've gotten from the business, um, sharing the tips and tricks um, around the globe. Mm. Okay. So it's a little bit early to be talking about things like efficiency or effectiveness benefits, but you've got a new process out of it that at least people can live with, right? Yes. Well, that's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> it's a great start. What's the next thing for you, for you guys in terms of the project, Amy? What would you say? Um, I think our customer portal <coughs> is absolutely <coughs> one of the next steps. Um, we, we actually have a portal right now, communities that we use with Salesforce, but it's on our roadmap to enhance that. Mm. And actually, I think it was a big driver in us choosing Financial Force in the first place was to have all of the information in one place so that when we develop the community and what customers have access to, you know, they have access to all of the products they own, all of the versions that they have of our software. They have access to cases. They have access to their projects, time entered invoices, everything that's right there in Salesforce. Right. So you've got visibility as well now, right? Yes. So that means people can't hoard stuff, doesn't it? Yes. <laughs> mm. we, they, well, they still try to hoard. Oh, yeah, of course they do. Of course they do. But, but they we actually can call them on it now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Ladies, a lovely story. It's always good to hear of companies that have been around a long, long time and that have done uh, things in a particular way for a long time and then met the challenge of change management. It looks like you're getting there. You're, you're getting there. You're, you're getting there. You can do it. <laughs> but it needs a modern platform. Heard it here first, boys and girls. Then, done.